Hello everybody and welcome to my next game development video. And uh, now if you look at my last game development video, a comment was made by Gazert, I believe it's Gazert Triple Six that um he wanted me to he or she wanted me to explain how I use my class structure and how that relates to the different screens and stuff like this. So I'm gonna be explaining my class structure, how everything goes because in the last tutorial you basically seen a sped up video of me doing some coding the foundation sh the foundational coding of how to start off the game that I'm creating but I never gave any commentary or actually explain what was going on so I'm gonna be um, spending the time in this video to explain what was going on in my code and hopefully you guys can take from this and use this uh, within the future even if you don't use C Sharp and XNA you can probably apply this you can apply this to any other graphics API I've used it with many other graphics APIs just different code different content but the concepts are the same so I start off mainly all my programs by creating a screen manager class. So let's look at screenmanager.cs. So the screen manager handles all the screens and basically everything that is displayed in your game is a screen. So uh the screen manager is going to handle the initializing of all the screens, loading the content of all the screens, updating all the screens, and drawing all the content on the individual screens. So what I have done is that I've made the screen manager class what is known as a singleton class. And what this means is that I create a static instance of the class and I made it private by using encapsulation. Then I've used a public property, or if you're not using C sharp, you can make a public function. Uh, public. If you're using C plus plus, you make a, a public function that is a pointer to the actual instance variable. And you can search up singleton classes and such on Google and whatnot. But basically, in my properties, I what I do is that I say that if instance is null, so if, if the instance isn't initialized yet, then we initialize the instance into a new screen manager instance, and then we return the instance. So basically, it's just like making a static class, and if you don't know what static classes are, basically, uh, it's kind of difficult to explain, just static classes, all the values are the same, no matter how many instances, if you have a static variable, then it doesn't matter even if you have a in different instance of the class, the, that variable remains the same throughout every single instance. So, uh, this basically creates one static instance. Instead of making a whole static class, you just make a static instance that can be linked to every single uh, public property, public method, or whatever that is able to be accessed in your program. So the reason why I've done this is because I don't really need to make an, uh, multiple instances of the screen manager class. I only need to have one instance of it and therefore it is suitable for this situation. So to handle the screens I have what is known as the game screen class right here. So the game screen class is going to is an abstract class which is going to be used to link every single um, class into it's going to be linked all oh, sorry all the screens are going to be inherited from the game screen class now why do I do this I do this to enable polymorphism which is taking different shapes so uh, utilizing this game screen class I can alter the different game screen instances to do different functionalities depending on which what screen is currently being displayed so if you don't understand that let me show you this right now so I have a stack of game screens right here so currently in the game I have a splash screen a title screen and a main menu screen okay so I have three screens and all are in t inherited by game screen so once I make a stack of game screen, game screen, 
anything that is inherited from the game screen class I could store in this in the stack if I never had it like this if I never inherited from the green screen then I wouldn't be able to store anything within the game screen stack I do it this way that anything that is a game screen can be stored as a game screen and then the game and the screen that's being displayed can be displayed accordingly if I never had it like this then I would probably have to put the object in here and then display the object in there but that isn't a very efficient way of going about it so I hope I haven't lost a lot of you guys I know it might have sounded a bit confusing but hopefully I never lost you guys so basically you by using polymorphism something can take many shapes so if I was to make uh, say I was in screen manager I was able to make an instance of the game screen class okay so say I want to make an instance of the game screen class right here and I put game screen and I named it the screen name uh, screen okay and I could put it's equal to new game screen I could do that as well but since something um let me see a class that's been inherited by the game screen so the title screen has been inherited by the game screen so since the title screen inherits the content of the game screen therefore I can say game screen dot screen is game screen screen is equal to new title screen and I wouldn't get an error because of polymorphism the game screen can also be a title screen and anything that is derived from the game screen class that it can be e that can be equal to the instance of the game screen variable or whatever you like to call it so why why is this useful to me the reason why this is useful to me is that it allows for flexibility and more things to do with the code for example once you scroll down in the in the game screen class I have what is called virtual methods and virtual methods are something that we use in polymorphism and that it can take many forms once you have a virtual method another class can override that virtual method with the same parameters and make it do something different than the original base class does so what does this do for me so for example if I if I say if I go at the screen manager and I say uh where is it oh, yeah so I say game screen sorry so I say game screen screen is equal to new title screen now if I was to call screen dot update I don't know if I, I have to call it in a parameter so say I made a uh, what whatever initialize method right here and I wanted to call the update function in title screen all I'd have to do is put screen dot update and then put in the following parameters that it needs etc etc now notice that the game screen class has an update method as well and the title screen overrides the title screen overrides this updates method so then whenever something whenever that instance of game screen is pointing to the title screen class meaning that the title screen is being displayed then it will call the title screens update method and then do what the title screen requires to be updated now uh, this makes it effective because whichever screen is being displayed it will call that screens update draw methods load contents and all that stuff in order for the screens to function properly so that is basically how I handle the different screens in my program so if I'll just show you the initial uh, the initialized load content uh, update etc etc so in the initialize method I basically add the screens that are in my program and then for don't worry about the modules the modules are basically something that's supposed to be displayed in the screen the modules have uh, the properties of the screens that they're displayed on what's the position on the screen they're displayed on 
the dimensions, the width and height of the actual module and what is displayed within the module. But for now, we just basically initialize all the screens that we specified in add screens. We initialize every single screen that is linked, that is derived from a game screen. Then we load all the content that's derived from the game screen. And then depending on which screen is at the top of the game screen stack, uh, so whichever screen is currently being displayed, then we update it. And whichever screen is currently being displayed, then we draw that screen right here so I hope that kind of gave you some insight on it it's basically an object oriented way to handle screen state because in programs you have to be able to handle screen state in order for your programs to run fluently and efficiently treat everything in a game as a screen once you the for the first instance I have splash screen the splash screen shows uh, the different companies or the different people who the major companies who actually help contribute to the production of it and they show their images after the splash screen is normally the title screen you can have like an enter button or something in the title screen and then you'll have a main menu screen which you can scroll through to select which game mode that you want to do then you'll have a main gameplay screen where all the gameplay happens and within the gameplay screen then you can have a menu or a store screen for when you actually enter the store you could have a stat screen where you display the stats inventory screen where you show all the inventory you have etc etc when you have a battle mode you show the battle screen rather than the actual gameplay screen and you show the controls and stuff within the battle and the navigation and stuff and the navigation inside the battle screen is going to be handled by the modules so basically everything in a game is considered a screen and you whatever is supposed to be drawn on that screen is supposed to be drawn and updated accordingly so hopefully you gain a bit of knowledge from that it's a kind of an object oriented way of going about it if it seems kind of com confusing then I suggest that you learn more about inheritance and polymorphism and once you learn about polymorphism and how the abstract classes or base classes or parent classes whichever one you like to call it can actually take different forms then you'll understand the method that I'm going about it so I hope that this tutorial, tutorial at least gave you a little bit of insight I know it might have sounded a bit confusing because I didn't really write down what I was going to say I would just I just seen the comment and I just just decided to make a video and go with the flow. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and bye.